Hi, I'm Natty and I'm the Yogi. And I'm Michelle and I'm the Blonde. And, and this, this is the, the Yogi, Yogi and the Blonde podcast. podcast. In this podcast, we offer guidance, motivation, education, and inspiration to help you adopt healthy habits you can sustain for life. If you enjoy the podcast and would like further information, head over to our Instagram or YouTube pages. You can find the links in the bio. Welcome to today's podcast number four. Today is about habits. Hey, Michelle. Healthy habits. Healthy habits. Yeah. Now, how has your healthy habit week been? <laughs> <laughs> Have I had a healthy week full of healthy habits? <laughs> yeah, you had a week full of healthy habits? Mm, the week has flown by, actually. I can't believe how quickly this week went. Yeah. That sounds like such an old person thing to say. <laughs> well, we are getting oh, where older. does the time go? But honestly, I find myself saying stuff like that all the time now. <laughs> the week well, has just flown by. We, uh, well, I'm I'm 45 and you're 39, so it's, it's you know we're getting older. It's so getting older, getting, we're getting but to we're the age it. where we talk about how quickly time passes. <laughs> For me, my nana sleep. I'm going to bed early. I'm a nana. I don't I don't stay up late. I get up early, so I get I get the early bird specials. <laughs> This isn't the Party Girl podcast. <laughs> no, no, that was back in, you know, 20 years ago. So Yeah, yeah, been there, done that. Yeah, yeah been there, done that. I've grown up, I've learned. Mm. <laughs> okay, now let's, um, that's enough shenanigans for now. <laughs> let's get back into How some. was your week? Your week was a bit more uh, interesting <laughs> than mine with your little trip to a and E. And then it was like emergency room for my back. That was like so painful. I've never cried so much in my life before. And then I went on a date with myself, which is a healthy habit of mine. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. So. You can explain a bit more. Yeah. Like, okay. About how about I'll start with that then? Mm. Um, Cause today is all about this podcast. Well, today podcast, whatever <laughs> like, it's all about healthy habits and healthy habits is what, brings into those healthy lifestyle routines really isn't it and um for myself I've when did, okay in 2020 is when I split with my ex and m- decided to live on my own and from there I started to get to know myself by myself um, when you're with someone, sometimes you lose yourself. I, I find this is just from my experience. I don't know if you've experienced that, Michelle. I think you have. One oh, hundred percent, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. One hundred percent. I um, I've gone. It was quite. It was probably about a year or so ago. I went. Oh, it'd been maybe more than that. Maybe two years ago. Yeah, maybe two years. Um, I went on a movie date first time doing something like that and I was just like um <laughs> a bit freaked out about it got but a movie date on your own on my own just to be clear. by myself yeah. yes yeah. thank you for clearing that up <laughs> so, yeah a movie date by myself I thought oh I'm gonna go and see this movie why do I need someone to go and see a movie why do I need someone to go and do something right and I thought, okay, I'm going to do go do this. And, and it's quite scary because you're going out of your comfort zone, all of that. But I enjoyed myself. And that's what I did this week. I went to um, the Blanc de Blanc, which you went earlier this week with some girlfriends. And um, I went and I had a $100 voucher as well at this uh, vegan, Thai infusion vegan restaurant. It was amazing. And I had a great time. I laughed so freaking hard at that show. Oh, my God. Like you had said, it was funny. Mm-hmm. And it was. I was laughing so hard. I had so much fun. And it just, yeah, it was a great date night. And, you know, I took some time. I, like, wash. I, like, took time beforehand. I did a bit of self-care beforehand. I put a mask on, eye mask, face mask, hair mask, did my hair, put on a little bit of a dress, nothing too fancy, but put on something, put on some makeup and, you know, and off I went and had a great time. It was, yeah, it's just, it felt so good. I find that when I do that, I, I've created self-confidence. I've created my self-esteem. Have you ever been on a date on your own, Michelle? Yeah. I love spending time on my own. I've been on holiday on my own. That's my next thing. Yeah. After my breakup, 
I went to Rarotonga on my own for a week. Cool. And it was epic. And then before I got with my partner, I went to Waikiki Island for a week on my own. I'm, I've, I feel very comfortable spending time with myself now. But yeah. I totally agree with you. When you first, unless you kind of grow up super independently and, and are used to kind of spending a lot of time on your own, yeah. it can be scary. It can be nerve wracking. Um, and you are 100% stepping out of your comfort zone. But as you've experienced, you do it you enjoy yourself and then you yeah. feel like a badass because it's like yeah. wow I I yeah it is empowering it's like wow yeah I I can do it I don't need I mean and I'm not saying that <laughs> getting enjoyment from other people is a bad thing but yeah you are capable of bringing yourself joy you're capable of of looking after yourself having a good time and yeah, that is an empowering feeling. You know what you want and you know that you can give it to yourself also. Yeah, yeah. And it's such a great feeling. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I just, I find that it makes me think that I can, I'm capable of anything now. Like, I'm just like, I can, I'm a freaking rock star. I'm a, like, not a diva where I'm high maintenance, but I'm like mm. hardcore I've got rock this. and yeah. diva, man. I, I don't know. I just, it's, and, and do you know what? You get to know yourself. You're like, get to know what you enjoy personally rather than having influences because I find that people can influence what you like and what you don't like. And it was great because I know I, I eat meat, I eat vegan, I eat all sorts. Right. And I find when I want to eat healthier and go to a vegan restaurant and I'm by myself, I can, because in the past, being in relationships and in intimate relationships, I find that it's been a bit hard to go to a vegan restaurant because they bitch and complain. Right. And, you know, and then you don't get to enjoy it. And I was there and I was enjoying it because I was given a hundred dollar gift certificate and the meals are about $27, So this is what I end up, I got myself a kombucha drink and then I got myself a entree, which was like these rice, things and this amazing nut sauce like peanut nut sauce it's amazing because I had to make sure things were gluten-free so they had gluten-free options which is great so awesome um and so I had that and then I was like oh debating between this green curry that was gluten-free and this pad thai that was gluten-free and I was like oh, I don't know which one and I'm like hold on a sec I've got like a hundred dollars so I <laughs> got I was going to get a dessert the only dessert they have gluten-free but they didn't have any left so I ended up getting the the rice um the rice wraps and vegetables and the nut sauce and then I got the green curry and then to go I got those wraps again with the pad thai <laughs> nice clever and it was so good and I was hit eating healthy and since we're doing that 30 day plant challenge right now the both of us and your partner that was joining us in that as well we can then I'm gonna I just gotta think about it and I've got to look I've taken some photos so I gotta look at the vegetables and mm. see if there's anything there that's not duplicate I haven't had and I know that I, have, I haven't had pumpkin I've had butternut squash but that's a different vegetable so I've had pumpkin and um the other thing I'm gonna add is the um eggplant but then I've got to look at the wrap and I think there might be cucumber I haven't had cucumber yet this week and something else so before you know it I'll have some more to my well I'm, I'll be over I am over 30 already so um, yeah yeah so it'll be good smashing out yeah yeah oh, that's yeah, amazing yeah. yeah yeah now even though I've got a second one we've we've we thought we'd share two um healthy habits let's move on to you Michelle what's one of your healthy habits that you're going to share yeah, so something um, that I do habitually now that helps me to live a healthy lifestyle yeah. is meal planning. Um, so love meal planning. So something that I experience myself, um, and also something that I hear a lot from my clients at the moment is often you kind of get home and it's like, oh. I don't know what to have. I don't know what to eat. And, you know, by the end of a day, you're tired. You don't really want to make any more decisions. 
And a lot of the time, and uh, this was me, this was my life, you just go grab um, a takeaway. And, you know, we all know that food cooked in a restaurant um, tends to be higher in salt, higher in sugar, higher in saturated fat, higher in calories. Um, and, you know, and the while your portions. massive portions and, you know, you're probably more likely to go for something like a pizza as well if you're feeling particularly lazy and they're very yummy. So, you know, I would find myself just getting into these habits of eating these takeaway type meals um, four or five times a week and not having a lot of energy. And then that obviously affects everything else. And then you find yourself in this cycle. So something that really worked for me, and I do it to this day, is um, meal planning. So literally at the end of the week, I'll get a piece of paper, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I'll make a list of what me and my family are going to eat for the week. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes I'll break that down into breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, so it's a bit nerdy, nerdy, but it takes away all of that decision-making process at the end of the day. If you've had a long day, if you've had a stressful day, you get home. What am I having for dinner? Ah, I'm having spaghetti bolognese for dinner from the list that I've written. I create my shopping list. I do my shopping list. So at the beginning of the week, my fridge and cupboards are full by the end of the week they're empty because I've bought the exact amount of food that I need for the meals that I've already planned for. So I eat well, my family eats well, there's no stress involved. There's very, there's minimal food waste, if any, um, because I've bought the right amount of food. So it saves me time having to make decisions every night. It's got me into a routine of eating nutritious food every day, which feeds into that whole having energy cycle uh, Mm -hmm. and it saves money as well, which, Mm -hmm. you know, is a nice little Brucey bonus. So something that I try to implement with my clients as well is to help them to learn how to plan for their week. And it just takes away so much stress during the week. It's it's work at the time. It takes time. Mm -hmm. It takes time to get into the routine of it, Mm -hmm. but it's something that I started and it works for me. And when I go off piece and if I don't have my plan, if I turn up in a supermarket, I'll wander around aimlessly and not know what the hell I'm doing there. Yeah. And then you're spending money on stuff that you don't want. And it's just it's a disaster. Like never go hungry. Never go shopping when you're hungry. Yeah, exactly. You so for me, getting it's, extra or crap. <laughs> yeah. Never go shopping without a plan because then you're like, oh, damn, I forgot to get this. And then you're going back to the supermarket again. And, you know, it's, you've got and more when chance you go back, of food. You tend to buy something extra or, or two or three. Yeah. Because you might be yeah. hungry or, you know yeah. what I mean? Stress. So there might be like a, a stress eating or emotional eating or something like that. Yeah. I, I, I um I do the same as you. It's like I have an idea what I'm having for the week and stuff. For me, I do it just slightly different because you've got a family. It's just me, myself, and I. And so for me is I actually will make something that will carry me over for at least a few lunches and dinners. So I always, it doesn't matter what time of the year, but I always have a salad in the fridge all mm. the time because then that's easy grab. And I just need to add a protein. And that's so easy for me. That's what I yeah. find I find helpful for me. And then as well as I'll do like the um, the uh, meals, you know, like I know like I'll make something today. Actually, not today. Um, I'll probably make something tomorrow is what I'll do. And then I'll make something a little bit later on this week as well, probably on Wednesday, because I just looking at my schedule, those are days that I can, I've got time to make it. So I look at when I've got time and also picking stuff that's maybe a little bit more time consuming during the weekend. And then something that's quick and easy during the week as well, because who wants to be after a long day, who wants to be cooking and prepping for an hour or an hour and a half, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah so that's how I work it as well and I'll like like today I'll probably um, go through and make a few different types of smoothies so they're easy just quick grab out of the fridge um that's how I use meal prep and then 
that's how I know what I'm having and what I'm consuming. So I know that I'm having the right amount of macros each day of my fats, of my protein, of my carbs, making sure I get my fibers, just everything in that way. So that's how I approach it. So I guess when you look at food prep and plan, there's like a basic line, which we both agree with is is having a plan, writing it down, Mm -hmm. having a list. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. I had a conversation with somebody at the gym this week. Um, their kitchen was really badly damaged in the floods that we've had recently. Oh, and he was telling me that he um, had to eat out every evening because he wasn't able to cook for himself. And he found that by the end of the week, his energy had nosedived he usually teaches one of the group fitness classes he had to hand the class off to somebody else because he didn't have the energy to be able to give the class his full 100 percent effort and as soon as he was able to get back to cooking for himself his energy levels shot back up and yeah. so it was he was explaining to me how shocking it was to see the effect on kind of eating this way regularly can yeah. have on the rest of your life, your energy levels. He couldn't work yeah. to the full yeah. extent that he wanted to. And that sounds really extreme. Um, but, but there are true. people that do eat in this way the vast majority of the week um, and just get used to that feeling of low energy, dragging themselves out of bed. Um, so I think if you want to live a healthy lifestyle the absolute base minimum you have to do is make sure that you are nourishing yourself and fueling yourself for the life that you want to live and if you're not putting good stuff into you then you're not giving yourself the best um, chance to to launch from so yeah um so yeah for me that the planning removing that barrier the barrier of being tired and not wanting to make decisions i just removed that from myself And now I know that myself and my family have that absolutely baseline of we are eating food that will nourish and sustain us and give us energy to do the rest of the things that we want to do. Yeah, yeah. No, I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. And another one I'm going to add on to that and I'm going to move on, which is going to take us to my second um, uh, habit is hydration. What I got to share this story. This is like something that just happened last week. So I've got a lady who's just signed up PT sessions with me. And um, I always do a Zoom consult with them, find out some information. And one thing I always end off with is I find out how much water they drink. And through the session, I learned that she's got low energy. She's got, she gets headaches by the end of the day. She's a teacher. And by the end of the, you know, it could be quite mentally, it might not be physically, but it's mentally draining. Right. And Mm. so she'd get headaches. Like she'd tell me like on a Monday is her heaviest day of teaching. And she'd have a headache by the end of the day, which then would deteriorate from her wanting to come to the gym. Cause who wants to go somewhere when they don't feel well? No one does especially when you don't want to go to the gym and work out. Right. And so I found out she, on a good day, on a good day, she's drinking 750 mils of water. Otherwise it's less than that, maybe about 400 mils. Mm. And her target for her, her size and body weight is um, about two liters. That's minimum. That's not including anything else that she's consuming or inhaling that's dehydrating her. So um, when I found this out, I was like, okay, I said to her, I said, I challenge you, I've got, I won't see you for a few days until our um, assessment. I said, I challenge you to increase your water intake. And I've explained everything to her. And she's like, okay, and gave her tips and ideas on how to create um, a new habit with that, which is putting alarms on your phone, various things like that, right? Um, having a glass of water, at least 250 mils up to 400 mils first thing in the morning before smoothie, before coffee, any of that. And so, um, I see her on Tuesday and she said she increased because we had our session on the Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning, late morning. And then, um, she started increasing her water from that day. And she said to me, that's the first Monday where she had no headache after work because she increased her water. She said her energy levels were so much better because, 
you know, when you've got headache and you feel nauseous, your energy drop, drop, oh, drop yeah. drops, because that's the one thing I've learned with my kidney disease is that I would get really bad vertigo, vertigo to a point that would put me in bed for about a week. Oh, and wow. um, where I can't sit up, it makes me sick. Um, even if I'm like lying on my side and I want to roll over to my back, I have, it takes like 20 minutes for my body to settle. Cause I feel nauseous and I feel sick. I never threw up, but I always felt like sick to my stomach. My head hurt from like the spins and stuff like that. Wow. And so, and it came down to that. It was hydration and stress. And so, yeah. And with hydration as well, I've noticed my skin has changed a lot as well because it's more plump and, and we think about hydration. So it's just fascinating with hydration, how, it really affects the body. I had, oh, I've got one more example. This is, this has cracked me up. I had this lady, she's mid to late seventies and all she drank was black coffee. That's all she drank was black coffee. And so that's a caffeine, right? Even though it's not like as, as high caffeinated as ca as coffee, but it dehydrates you as well, right? If that's all you're drinking. So, um, and then she, all she needed, cause she's just a tiny woman. All she needed was a minimum to drink was a liter and a half for her body size. And so she was nailing a liter a day. Okay. And I was like, congratulating her because going from nothing to a liter a day, that's amazing thing to be so happy for. So I always, you know, congratulated her on that because that's a good achievement. And, um, I think it was like, four or five months later, she had a checkup with her doctor doing all the blood work and he approached her and he goes to her. So funny, Michelle, he goes, wow. He's like, your kidney and liver function have increased. What have you been doing differently? Drinking water. Yeah. So it's just like, and she, cause she's quite, she's a cheeky, cheeky woman. She's like, tells me about it. And she's like, and then when she comes to that little question, she's like, she looked at me really funny. And she's like, what do you think it is, Nadia? I'm like, hmm, I wonder, <laughs> what do you think it is? So it was, it was, it's fascinating to see how hydration has changed my life and how it's just something simple. And that's where I get people to start with is hydration. Our body's like made of 80% water. Our hormones travel through our blood. Our blood is 90% water. So, you know, if you're having hormonal issues and imbalances, especially as being females and the age that I'm at and that you're coming into, our hormones are changing massively. So we need to make sure we're well hydrated. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what hydration, hydration is a big one for me. Yeah. So, and the way that I started, like, do, do you, you drink lots of water? What's your, what do you do? What did you do to increase your water intake, Michelle? Actually, do you know what's really interesting? I realized last year that that was probably my healthier habit that was lacking, drinking water. Oh, wow. Um. So the thing that I did to make me drink more water, which sounds really silly, but it really worked for me. I bought myself a really nice water bottle to drink mm -hmm. from with a really nice spout. It was really easy to use. And that made a difference. Nice. It really made a difference. Just buying myself a nice bottle to drink out of made me drink more water. Um, so yeah, so that that worked for me because I, I think my bottle is a litre and I need to be drinking maybe two and a half litres a day. So I know that I need to have two, two of my bottles yeah. and then the rest of the water. We always have water at the table during dinner uh, and I'll drink with all my meals separate to my bottles. Um, but yeah, it, having the bottle that I actually look forward to drinking out of and giving me a reference point for how many of these I need to drink per day really helped me to, to yeah, get more on top of my hydration because I was lacking for sure. Yeah. And for people who's, who are new and want to never think about it, what I always give them advice is putting an alarm on your phone because you can title the alarm on your phone. So you just put hydration or drink water or whatever the case may be. Right. So, um, by doing that, I've noticed that that's what I did at first because I wouldn't think about it. Right. 
Mm. And I found that helped quite a lot. Now, the other thing is um, I love your bottled water. I at the buying a bottle because it's it's so true. It's like it's like investing in yourself. It's not like you mm. have to buy it all the time. It's like a one off. That's it. You know, I actually have a collection. You've seen my collection because <laughs> I'm a bit of a water snob. I have a medical grade um, water machine um, at, in my home. So um, I bring my water. <laughs> There's nothing, but yeah. And I'm, uh, that's what I'm doing with one of the PTs. Um, he's actually away this month uh, visiting family overseas. But um, the past three weeks, I've been bringing him this water to him. And that's all he's been drinking. And he's like, I notice a difference, Nadia. I notice a difference. I notice a difference. And I'm like, the quality of water is the other thing that makes such, such a big difference. Mm. Now, if you want to learn more, more, just DM me and I can tell you more about it. But anyways, what is your second thing? for your my, habit my healthy habit so yeah. um another big one for me is um sleep so again and I'm I taught everything I'm coming out I'm coming out from experience so there's no judgment for anybody that is living this life at the moment because I've been there too but you know Netflix and things like that are designed to lure us in to keep us watching binge 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 um reels on phones like you know everything at the moment is designed to keep us hooked to keep us hooked to get our brains like in that moment and then before you know it you might have watched five episodes of something on Netflix it's <laughs> one o'clock in the morning and you're like oh my god I've got to get up at seven you know what what have I done and you know that was me that was the life I was living I was doing all of that with wine in my hand <laughs> not getting adequate sleep waking up in the morning like where am I? What's going on? Running around like a mad headless chicken. So for me, actually having boundaries, and this is something that you can apply for anything in your life, not just sleep, but having a boundary. So in our house, I'm going to make us sound so boring, <laughs> but we, we only watch one episode of something per night. Like we hold each other accountable to this. Even if something's really exciting, we're like, no, no, no one one episode and we have a, a fixed bedtime we try to be in bed by half half nine ten o'clock every night because our alarm is going off at five so for us to have seven to eight hours sleep we need to be in bed at that time and if we're not and the alarm still goes off at five it affects our whole day for both of us so you know you just start to look at your life and go what are my problems um, one of my problems is I can't drag myself out of bed because I haven't had enough sleep. How do you get more sleep? Go to bed early. How do you go to bed earlier? Set yourself a bedtime. <laughs> People do it for their children. Do it for yourself. Set yourself a bedtime. Work back from how many hours sleep you need. And that's your bedtime. Yeah. No, and, you no. know, that makes such a difference. Like to be able to, the alarm goes off at five and it's like, okay, fine. It's the morning. Not, oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I've been there so many times and mm. that's something I've been like I struggle with is my sleep as well so I totally get where you are coming from and the whole binging of you know you're like oh I'm gonna watch the next one go and I yeah, think yeah, yeah. I, I love Netflix in the way like I love that I can watch something when it works within my schedule and I like mm. that rather than working my life around a tv show that only shows on whatever I like I yeah. love that bit but mm. I don't like how you can just walk through one to the other because then you get stuck in that rabbit hole and yeah. that's something I have done as well where I am now like you know you were teasing me at the beginning of my <laughs> my late night you know I got home just after 6 p.m because I want to be in bed by 8 30 actually because I was so tired from being at the emergency room because of my back I I think my aura ring locked me out as like falling asleep just after seven nice <laughs> so you need like, sleep oh. <laughs> my body needs to sleep so it's just like it's so funny so and even like to a point of not being afraid of saying no to something mm. because it's going to affect my sleep and there's a new algorithm thing on um on uh the aura ring where it talks about if you're a morning person and it says i'm a morning person i get up before the sun rises 
And that's only 10% of the population. <laughs> mm. yeah. And it said, and it even says that it's okay to have a night of social activities important for me to have a later night, but to make sure that I keep back to the consistency of going back to bed early, you know, yeah. to not let it filter me to change my habit because mm. it yeah. affects me quite a lot. And I notice a big difference with my moods, with the way that um, my food choices, because if I'm tired, I don't know about you, I want to eat like carby, sugary stuff. And so it does that ripple effect, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But you actually just raised a really interesting point there. You know, even though I have a fixed bedtime, if there is an opportunity to go and see a show or go out with friends or whatever, do it. You know, one night out, two nights out, that's not going to ruin your whole lifestyle. Like your, your ring told you, you know, as long as you're predominantly doing the thing, then you're on the right track. You know, mm. predominantly we meal plan and we stick to the meal plan. On the odd occasion, we might be like, oh, do you know what? Let's go out for dinner tonight. And mm -hmm. we do because we enjoy it and we get enjoyment. And this is life. And I think it's, you know, having a habit for anything, if you can stick to it 80% of the time, mm -hmm. you are winning, you know, because life gets in the way. You, you end up in the emergency room. You have no control over what you're eating or um, mm -hmm. what time you go to bed you know life happens and you have to yeah. be able to adapt to that and just because you don't um, stick to your plan or you don't um, go to bed at the time you wanted to you shouldn't allow that to derail everything and go oh well I've ruined it all now so I might as well <laughs> just keep going and go yeah. back to binging or whatever you know if you have yeah, yeah. a night just just get back on it the next day you know and I think yeah that's another important thing to know. These are habits and you want to do things habitually, but sometimes things will happen. That means you might have to stray away from that. And that's okay. As long as you come back to predominantly being early into bed or predominantly yeah. planning or whatever, you know? Well, do you, do you know who Dr. Libby is? Yes. Okay. Dr. Libby in one of her books, she talks about called the zigzag theory. The zigzag theory is the zig is what you do every day, you know, the eating well, the food planning, the hydration, the sleep and wake up um, consistency, the, you know, all of that. And the zag is what you do once in a while. So, for example, I like I had my date night, right? Or my date afternoon <laughs> to myself. <laughs> Um, I still went out for dinner, right? But through the rest of the day, I drank um, my, I, you know, I was hydrating myself. I, I did my meditation, my journal writing, my, I ate good whole foods beforehand, even though I went to a healthy restaurant. But do you know what I mean? Is that I did everything that I normally do. But when it came to the social evening, it was about the social outing. So some people, when they are so good with clean eating, that they limit themselves to a social outing because they're so afraid to go out of that clean eating. But it's not about the eating. It's about being in that social atmosphere. Like for myself, yes, I wasn't with other people, but I was in an environment of group of people all watching the show and laughing, and enjoying themselves. And that was my focus. So um, I love Dr. Libby's theory of the zigzag theory because it's about what you do every day. And that's what you're saying. It is about what you do every day is what counts. So if you have a night where you have a glass of wine, doesn't mean that you have to have a glass of wine every night after that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's about that whole zigzag theory. I love that zigzag mm. theory and how she explained it, which is pretty much the way you said it as mm. well. Um, and it's about doing what you do every day it makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. And that's us pretty much. There's mm. obviously there's lots of habits that both Michelle and I have, and we <laughs> discuss, we're like, okay, we don't want to overwhelm you guys. Cause this could take hours and hours and hours mm. on end of going through all of them. But this is just to give you a taste really, isn't it, Michelle? Absolutely. And, you know, if there are any areas in particular where people are interested in learning and how can I improve this, how can I habitually improve this, then just drop us a line and, and we'd love to talk more on that. But yeah, yeah, it can be quite overwhelming to take in a lot of information at the time. 
Um, and there are obviously lots of other things that we do for ourselves um, to keep healthy. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, we don't want to go oh, too well. far. <laughs> but keep an eye out, too, as well, because Michelle and I have a lot of projects coming up. We've got on Instagram, we're going to have some challenges, which will be a part of these healthy habits. Right, Michelle? Mm-hmm. And already um, mentioned we are, one earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, the 30 plant. Yeah. Coming soon. Yes, coming soon. That's going to be our first one. Anyways, um, and just so you guys know, we are actually partaking in these challenges ourselves. So it's not just here you guys go. But um, also our goal this year is to roll out some programs. We're going to have some online programs, which is not just about fitness, but it's going to be everything in between. So Michelle's going to be leading us through the nutritional part, which I'm so looking forward to. And we're going to have things from all types of different types of exercise and movements to self-development, inner growth, um, all sorts of stuff. So um, just keep an eye out, follow us, um, and you will find out more. We will tell you guys when that's about to come ready. So we've got some projects coming down the line. So keep mm. eyes and ears open. Yay. Yeah. Okay, Michelle. Hey, so what are you grateful for? Let's finish off. I love gratitude. So let's. <laughs> you always catch bit, me off guard with theme. this. It's not always my thing, but it's it's important, but it always catches me off guard. I do, I do, I do. I do. But hopefully I will instill a beautiful practice with you. On this. Yes. Yeah. It's coming. Um, today I'm grateful for my family, my boys. They're both here. We're going to have a nice family day. Enjoy the sun before they go overseas. Yeah, because so, yeah. they're going grateful away for, for that. Weeks. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What about you? For me, is grateful for my dad. Um, when I went to that show last night um, or yesterday afternoon, <laughs> You say, well, maybe it's my last night, um, evening time for me, um, because I know he would have loved it. He's given me the big, loud laugh. He's given me that enjoy of that spark. And he was there with me at my heart. Um, so I'm grateful for my dad instilling that in me and that joy of just laughing and just not caring what other people say um, and just being me and just being the loud, full of energy spirit person that I am. And I thank my dad for that. So I'm grateful for dad. Thank you, dad. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I got Gorgeous. a little teary eyed yesterday mm. as well, because I was thinking about him. So those that don't know, my dad passed away three weeks ago. And, um, and I thought, I'm like, oh, he would love this. He would love this show. So I'm sure he was watching it with me. I know he was yeah. watching it with me oh, and laughing lovely. just as loud. So Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's us for today. Um, so follow us, comment, wherever you're listening. If it's on YouTube, if it's on Spotify, um, we're going to have little snippets of bits of the podcast also on our social media. And um, yeah, so follow us, like us, comment. This is going to help us grow and evolve and keep going forward. Otherwise, thank you for joining us. And thank you very much. Time. We'll be back. And comment, comment down below with any ideas, anything you guys want to learn more or hear and talk about our experiences. And if it's something that we don't know, we'd be happy to, hey, do a challenge and experiment and try it ourselves. So we're always open to all sorts of things. Yeah, I, I, I am. I don't know. I would talk. I'm like over Depends, talking depends on the show. thing. Depends <laughs> on the thing. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, thanks again for joining us. And I'm Yogi. I'm the Yogi, Nadia. Yeah. And I'm the blonde. It wasn't great timing there. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> thanks for joining us. We'll see Thank you guys you. next time. If you have enjoyed listening to our podcast today and want to hear more, please subscribe using the button below.